Hi, have a look. Do you recognize this? This is the table, right? Most of you have seen this table in your school life. Even it might be nostalgic for you if you really look closely at what this table is all about. This is nothing but logarithm table. And there is another table, anti-logarithm table. We have learned it extensively during our school time. How to use this table, right? For multiplication and division of large numbers. This is invented by, this table is invented by, I mean, the many people behind it, it's not just one person, but mostly we often give the credit to John Napier. He was an English mathematician. And mostly this log table were used by astronomers you know, astronomers as well as my navigators for shipping, uh, you know, for deciding the navigation of uh, ships. Now, have you ever used this log table later in your life? You know, after you passed out your school days? Probably not. We have never ever used this log table later. We use it only for the sake of passing the exam, right? Am I right? Because why? Right now we have this kind of magic, the calculators, or we have smartphones that can do all these calculations, you know, with few clicks, or computers we do have. So, uh, you know, the practical utility of these kind of tables are extremely limited. Probably some of you have taken statistics course as part of your college or university curricula, and you have seen tables like this. Table on your left side is something called P distribution table. Very often for you know student T tests and other tests where the P distribution is used, for example, to calculate confidence interval of mean. The table on your right is something called F distribution table, F for Fisher, the father of statistics. Fisher distribution table, F distribution table, is again we use this table often for ANOVA and other calculations, the statistical calculations for, uh, you know, the F distribution is dependent upon. Then there is another, yet another table here, chi square distribution table, probably you might have seen that as well for, you know, for calculations based upon the chi square distribution, for example, chi square goodness of fit test. Again, the same question to you after you graduated from your college or universities. Have you ever used these tables? Probably not. Even if you are a working scientist, even if you have generated lots and lots of data by yourself, have you ever used this table to solve it, to make meaningful inferences about your data, for example, to do some statistical test, t-test or ANOVA? Why not? Because these days we have good computational softwares to do all this work with few clicks. You know, you can save a lot of time for that. So people doesn't know, I mean people, are, doesn't, this, this particular table doesn't have much of the practical utility these days. But the problem with current day is that we do not know, you know, how to interpret statistical test or how to perform the statistical test. Even though you know how to uh, use this particular table, we were taught very nicely during our college days how to use this table, but you know, unfortunately, when it comes to uh, the real lab data, you know, we all slutter, we all uh, cannot do. For example, look at this table. This table presents you with three columns. Each column, Fucus, Gracilaria, and Codium, the three algal genera. And there are four rows. These rows are nothing but replicates, replicate measurements of something that we have measured in our lab. And these numbers are nothing but chloroplast diameters in micrometer across three alkyl genera. Right? If I ask you to calculate average or standard deviation, how will you do that for standard deviation especially? Will you simply take all these measurements at one go and say that? total number or n is 12 and perform the standard deviation of this particular set, sample or population. You know, such a simple question to you. Or should I partition this data set separately and then calculate the standard deviation? These are actually very common doubt and the students doesn't know how to solve it. You know, even though they know how to use those tables, statistical tables, this is actually the problem. 
uh, with our education system. So instead of actually going for technicalities and equations, in this course, I'll give you a non-mathematical overview of biostatistics and mathematical biology and how to actually make you know informed decisions and conclusions you know of your data set uh, rather than using these tables and performing exact absolute calculations there is something called biological replicates and technical replicate if you know these two things clearly then you can actually solve this particular problem very easily uh, using pseudo replicate measurements you know most of us what we do we generate the data and after that we ask one of our colleague right in other institute or other department the statistical colleague to solve the problems you know to help us to make inferences out of our statistical data set and we will give due credits to that person in our publication so is that the right method to do that Again, the Fisher, the father of this discipline, his famous statement here is to call in the statistician after the experiment is done, maybe no more than asking him to perform a post-mortem examination. He may be able to say what the experiment died off. So it means that it makes no sense at all, absolutely no sense at all, to ask a statistician to help you out once the data is generated. So you have to design your experiment thoroughly. You have to use a significance level you are during the part of your you know scientific uh, uh, methodology itself right experimental design itself so you have to actually use a lot of things sample size for example you cannot change it once you complete your assessment once you get a peak value you want to reduce the p value by increasing the sample size or doing multiple comparisons or you know choosing a different significance level no that is cheating you know, this Fisher, do you know, how many of you know that this Ronald Fisher and Carl Pearson, two founding fathers of statistics, the field of statistics, are not really statisticians, they are basically biologists. You know, they are population geneticists and they delve into this field to solve the problems of population genetics. So in this particular program, we will be solving a number of population genetic problems using biostatistics. So, uh, you know that is that will give you an idea how this particular discipline evolved so as Prashant Chandra Mahalnobis he is the father of statistics in India he is one of the famous statisticians again he was a biometrician uh, you know uh, he together worked with HBS Haldane JBS Haldane uh, for population genetic studies do you know that the p values that often we rely on for the biostatistics are not at all reproducible and p values uh, you know, uh, people hack it, something called p-hacking, and there is a term uh, to overemphasizing these p-values, something called stargazing. Do you know that the Fisher proved that Gregor Mendel faked most of his data, he massaged his data to confirm, uh, you know, to that uh, model. How many of you know different cognitive biases and logical fallacies and if you do not know these cognitive biases and logical fallacies, probably uh, you know you can never draw meaningful conclusions from your studies. You know that comes even before the statistics come in play. Statistical confounding, for example, you know uh, the, the uh, you know the, the correlation does not mean causation, right? The confounding. How many of you know are aware of the real problem, intricate problems of the confounding? Do you know what is winner's curse or prosecutor's fallacy or defendant attorney's fallacy or H-A-R-K or regression to mean? All these problems we'll be covering as part of this particular program and the program is called Biostatistics and Mathematical Biology which is a totally non-mathematical and intuitive that is simple introduction to this particular field offered by Central University of Punjab in collaboration with Swayam platform that is S-W-A-Y-A-M platform of Ministry of Human Resources and Development Government of India so anybody can enroll for this particular program and you will be getting you know credits and this is a formal MOOC and uh, upon Upon uh, you know, upon uh, passing uh, 
different examination that we'll be conducting throughout this particular course and uh, uh, you know you this particular credits are valid throughout indian universities because this is an mhrd program and uh, as part of this program, we'll give you an overview what uh, you know uh, this particular program right, and what is being covered here so how to read and interpret published data in an informed way that is extremely important so if you you'll be reading a lot of papers the scientific papers right with peer reviewed literature and you see a lot of graphs like that for example the graph on your left side is something called uh, box and whisker plot so unfortunately most of the statistics syllabus of indian universities do not teach anything about this, such a simple uh, you know graph like box and whisker plot or something on your right side that is static fitness landscape that is a landscape plot how to actually generate this kind of plot how to interpret this plot you know and that i'll be presenting you uh, nicely we'll be using a lot of intuitive analogies for example uh, to teach bayesian statistics you know bayesian posterior probabilities will be uh, you know one of my favorite analogies that you ask your daughter to pick a screwdriver from your you know workplace from your attic and then she comes back to you and say there is no screwdriver papa now the point is uh, will you trust that particular reason the actually there is no screwdriver there or she missed the screwdriver you know it all depends upon very simple thing the size of the screwdriver if the screwdriver is extremely small and then she says there is no screwdriver probably she missed out right or if the screwdriver is really big and then she comes back and say there is no screwdriver in that case in that case prior probability is high that what she says is right right so the lot of analogies will be using thoroughly throughout this class a lot of intuitive diagrams too for example probability tree we can use probability tree for answering a number of population genetic questions and hardy weinberg castle equilibrium right and this is a very intuitive uh, way that we can actually use these trees even for solution or including uh, involving bayesian probability reasoning probability tree or fluctuation test a very famous fluctuation test of luria and maxwell view that says that you know mutations arise randomly not in response to selection you know selection comes later so this particular thing you know it's you fluctuation test makes a lot more information informative it more it makes more sense in light of poison distribution so basically luria and delbruck they proved that you know it is non gaussian the vmr ratio you know uh, variance to mean ratio is not one so uh, you know poison distribution makes sense in uh, understanding fluctuation test of luria and delbruck and a number of other famous experiment uh, on population genetics as well as the normal genetics will be covering throughout this particular program as well as the evolutionary biology as well we will be using lots of real lab data right the, the data that we have actually generated in our lab or our my colleagues lab so we'll be using those data to actually to solve uh, or to do some statistical test using the real lab data so that is uh, another uh, interesting facet of this particular program and uh, of course throughout the program there will be a lot of fun uh, you know because uh, we'll be using we'll be doing a lot of games as part of this program as well for example the one which you see it here three doors with one door as a god you know that that kind of uh, uh, particular um, uh, monty python problems you know this kind of problems will be actually using to uh, solve different uh, you know to understand different concepts of the probability and statistics to you and as part of this particular program we'll also be doing a lot of solutions in class solutions on the whiteboard so i will show you step by step how to solve uh, you know the statistical problems this is the course outline i uh, will be starting with types of studies then levels of measurements and we will then go to summarizing the data how to summarize the data then comes descriptive statistics uh, two types point estimates as well as interval estimates then we will be moving on to moments normality test and outliers again this part is uh, something that most of the indian universities miss on that the normality test for example uh, you know uh, k2 omnibus test uh people doesn't know how to use that kind of test or outliers how to detect this outlier statistically for example grubs test so all these tests will be thoroughly covering 
and then confidence interval and how to calculate confidence interval not merely of standard deviation probably you might know how to calculate standard deviations confidence interval but confidence interval of a Poisson distribution for example or a binomial distribution we will actually show you how to calculate these things uh, using of course using a uh, you know uh, online calculators too then I will show you uh, the statistical hypothesis testing that is a current gold standard of you know scientific methodology right and p-values what these p-values are you know this is um, uh, most of the students do have problems so I will be using a lot of intuitive analogies to explain to you how the p-values work then I will tell you about different statistical tests including uh, t-test, ANOVA, then RR that is uh, relative ratio or OLPS ratio or uh, relative risk or chi-square tests all these things will be actually shown. So this is another uh, important highlight of my program. Uh, we'll be covering lots of categorical data. So because in biology we use a lot of categorical data, so we'll be uh, emphasizing on the categorical data as well. Then Pearson's correlation, simple linear regression. Of course, these are part of most of the biostatics course. And another highlight of my program is I'm also teaching you non-linear regression. So in biology, non-linear regression is extremely important. Unfortunately, most of the statistics programs do not include this particular uh, subject. So there is another highlight. And then permutations and combinations often overlooked, uh, you know, uh, subject of statistics. Uh, which does have an immense utility in genetics and uh, biology problems. Probability, again, uh, lots of probability theory we will be covering, uh, you know, thoroughly the probability theory, including Bayes' theorem and likelihood. And, you know, Bayes' theorem and likelihood have extremely important use in, uh, you know, in the uh, modern uh, molecular systematics and phylogenetic taxonomy, right? So we will be covering this Bayes' theorem and maximum likelihood so to complete this course. So overall this course is having very interesting different uh, uh, you know uh, different things that normally most of the universities throughout India do not have. For example a non-linear regression or categorical data how to assess the categorical data you know all these things we will be actually covering and so that you know I, I, I hope uh, this particular course will be uh, extremely useful for most of the students of biology which I do not expect you to have any mathematical prior uh, you know skills uh, in order to take this particular program because this is totally non-mathematical and this is totally focused on the application rather than uh, you know solving the, the test the, the exam test and uh, yeah, as part of this particular course I will also be giving you a comprehensive training on two software that is Microsoft Excel how to do the statistics using Excel as well as GraphPad Prism how to perform statistics using GraphPad Prism so uh, go ahead and please take this particular program if it suits you and uh, this particular program uh, the course is called Biostatistics and Mathematical Biology offered by Central University of Punjab in collaboration with Swayam platform of MHRD so this is a, a taught program which is a MOOC offered through uh, you know inter internet and upon successful completion of this particular course you are eligible for credits as part of the ongoing programs at different universities in India. So thank you for listening.